After electricity has been made and transmitted to your city, it's time for it to be distributed to homes and businesses. The distribution system carries electricity at lower levels for shorter distances, such as from city to city or neighborhood to neighborhood. Like the transmission system, these smaller distribution wires are held up by distribution poles or buried underground. These poles are typically 50 feet high and are made mostly of wood. While the distribution poles and wires appear harmless, they must still be treated carefully and with safety in mind. Even the amount of electricity delivered to your home can cause serious injury if mishandled. Let's now explain what's on a typical distribution pole from the top to the bottom. At the top of the pole are the primary or main wires. These wires are coming from a nearby substation and can carry anywhere from 34,500 volts to 7,200 volts. The most common voltage is 12,000. Remember, the electricity started out as high as 765,000 volts coming from the power plant and was stepped down to lower voltages at substations. If the electricity is going to a home, there is typically just one main wire. If the electricity is going to a business, there would be three wires because a business usually needs and uses more electricity than a home. These primary or main wires are often held up on the pole by a cross arm. The wires are held in place by insulators, which help to keep the cross arm and pole from becoming energized by the wires. The next piece of equipment typically found on a distribution pole is a lightning arrester. This is similar to a surge protector in your home. A lightning arrester protects the pole's equipment from being harmed by lightning. At about the same level as the lightning arrester is the cutout. A cutout is similar to a fuse in your home. It protects the pole and its equipment from too much electricity. If a squirrel or tree branch were to come in contact with a wire, the cutout will open, indicating a problem with that section of the line. If you ever see an open cutout, be sure to call your power company. Below the cutout is the piece of equipment that looks like a can. It is called a transformer. It takes the electricity from the wires at the top of the pole and steps it down to the lower level needed for a home or a business. Remember, wires can either be on a pole or buried underground. If the primary wires are underground, then the transformer is the green box often found in front, side, or backyards. So, if you have overhead lines, you will have a pole and transformer. If you have underground lines, you will have a green box on the ground. Now let's get back to the pole. Under the transformer is another copper wire called the neutral wire. This does not mean it is safe to touch. The neutral wire is a return line that goes back to the substation and helps to balance the amount of electricity out on the system. Without a neutral wire, our appliances could get too much or too little electricity, which can cause damage. In recent years, the rise in copper prices has made it a precious metal, and as a result, copper neutral wires like this have become a target for thieves. Copper theft is a huge risk to the thieves because they can be killed by coming in contact with a neutral wire. However, it's also a big risk to the public. Many times, thieves will cut the wire and leave loose ends hanging where people and animals can come in contact with them. Below the neutral wire is the secondary wire. After the electricity passes through the pole-mounted or underground transformer, it is carried in the secondary wire at the lower level of 120 or 240 volts. Under the secondary wire are the phone and cable wires. They are generally the lowest wires on the pole. Phone and cable wires are not safe to touch because they could become energized. For example, if a power line were to fall and come in contact with a phone or cable wire, the phone and cable wires can become energized. At the bottom of the pole are copper grounds. These are protective pieces of equipment. A ground is something that will take electricity to the earth. Remember, electricity is always looking for all quick paths to the earth. So, if there were to be a problem with any of the equipment on the pole, the electricity would be attracted to the copper ground because it's a conductive material and pass through it to the earth. Again, copper thieves seem to target copper grounds because they are at ground level. However, at any point in time, a ground could be doing its job and have electricity running through it. 
making it very dangerous to a thief or anyone who would touch it. And lastly, on some poles, depending on their location, there could be another larger wire running off it at an angle. This is called a guy wire. It is used to support a pole. Again, if there's a malfunction with the equipment, this wire could become energized, and if people aren't paying attention, it also could become a tripping hazard. You should never pull or hang on a guy wire either. Well, let's quickly review the equipment on a distribution pole. Primary wires are on top and usually carry 12,000 volts of electricity from a substation. A cross arm holds the wires up on the pole. Insulators hold the wires in place and protect the rest of the pole and equipment from having electricity run through it. Lightning arresters protect the pole and equipment from lightning strikes. Cutouts act like a fuse and open when there is a problem with a line or a section of it. The transformer takes the electricity in the primary wire and takes it down to a lower level. The neutral wire is below the transformer and acts as a line back to the substation and balances out the amount of electricity or load on the system. The secondary wire holds the lower level electricity after it passes through the transformer. The phone and cable wires are typically the lowest wires on the pole. Grounds are made of copper and take electricity on the pole into the earth. And on some poles, a guy wire is used to help support the pole. Now that you've learned about the basic equipment used to distribute electricity to your home or business, let's talk about some safety hazards that can be posed by this equipment. Electricity never shuts off, so if a wire breaks or falls down, the electricity is always looking for a path to ground. And the human body is a very good path to ground. Avoid all fallen wires and presume that they have electricity running through them. Do not touch any wires under any circumstances. Call 911 and your local power company immediately to report fallen wires. Also, do not touch anything or anyone the line may be touching. Objects can become energized just by contacting a downed power line. Even telephone or cable lines can become energized, so don't touch any wires. Electric wires are not insulated like power cords for home appliances. What may appear to be some form of insulation is actually weatherproofing material and does not provide protection and make the line safe to touch. Always be aware of overhead lines. Keep ladders, TV antennas, pool and gardening tools, satellite dishes, and any equipment away from all wires. You and anything you're touching should maintain a minimum of 10 feet of clearance from the wires at all times. Contact with underground lines can be deadly as well. Always call 811 before any digging project. By calling 811, you will be routed to the Underground Locating Service for your state and local utilities will be notified for your locate request. In some states, homeowners own the underground lines and facilities, so a certified electric contractor should also be called to mark the underground lines in these situations. If your vehicle comes in contact with a utility pole or wire, do not get out of the car. Call 911 and alert others to stay away from your vehicle. You are protected when you are in the vehicle, but the outside of your vehicle could have electricity passing through it, so it is unsafe to touch. If you must exit the vehicle because of fire or other imminent danger, remove all loose items or clothing and jump clear of the vehicle. Avoid touching the car and the ground at the same time. Land with both feet together, keep your feet as close together as possible, and shuffle away from the car. Copper theft can kill you. Do not attempt to steal copper from electric lines or facilities. Tell your friends and loved ones stealing copper is illegal and can be deadly.